Hello and welcome everybody to one of our first um, Library Hack presentations. Um, Library Hack is an initiative of the National and State Territory Libraries of Australia and New Zealand where developers, artists and digital content creators will be invited to remix and repurpose library collections and data. Library Hack is an initiative of the Reimagining Libraries Project Community Created Content and the EDGE is delivering a range of activities and events uh, throughout the state to show how community created content can be made using library data and freely available data sets. Uh, tonight Colleen Morgan will be giving a presentation on many of the exciting forms of data visualisation. Um, after her chat we'll open the room up for questions and discussions on what sort of mashups people um, might like to do and how they can incorporate the State Library of Cre Queensland data sets um, into that framework. Colleen is our catalyst for the digital visual, visual arts at the edge. She runs a very popular workshop series called Thread Tech using motion sensors and LED lights in fashion garments. Colleen is a PhD candidate at the U Queensland University of Technology. Her research focuses on using intelligent systems to improve teaching and learning and she also teaches communication design at QUT and she is learning how to be a jeweller. Please welcome her. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kip, for making me sound so impressive. Um, alrighty, so I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Library Hack and get you excited about Library Hack um, because I myself am a really big fan of data visualisations and things like that. So when Library Hack came up, I thought, yes, this is an excuse for me to share all the things that I love that I've been gathering over the last couple of years um, that I've been showing to students as I go along in my teaching as well. So come on in. <laughs> um, so today I'm just going to be telling you a little bit about what Library Hack is and what prizes are up for grabs because that's the really important part. Um, and then I'm just going to go through a whole bunch of different types of data visualisations and, and mashups um, just to give you an idea of what things are out there to really inspire you because um, there's so much out there that's wonderful and so many different techniques for visualising things. Um, so hopefully that will give you an idea to spark, or spark some ideas of what you can do with the data that the State Library of Queensland has released for Data Hack. Um, I'll talk about those different data sets uh, and then we'll just have a bit of a general discussion about what ideas you guys might have for creating your own uh, things for Library Hack. So first of all, what is Library Hack? Um, it's a mashup and application competition using data from Australia and New Zealand libraries and the State Library of Queensland has released its very own data sets. Um, Queensland has a state competition and there's also a national level competition so there's two chances to win. Um, there are great prizes up for grabs, I'll go through them in a tick. Um, but basically it's a chance for you to tell your own Queensland story to go and have a look through some of the his historical things that exist, some of the photos, some of the old musical scores, some of the history around convicts and things like that and remix it up and make your own story from it or reveal hidden connections that may not have been thought of or told before. Um, so yeah, it's an, ex an opportunity to experiment and have fun and maybe win. <laughs> uh, so there's three different competition categories. The first up is um, a photo mashup. So you can create your own mashup, which is basically a remix or putting two different things together um, using some of the photos that the State Library of Queensland has released. Um, the open category, you might win 6,000 for that one or if you're in the youth category, um, you might win an iPad 2. And then for the, the specific Queensland based one, you might win $2,000. And for the special library staff, we could win an iPad 2. So these are just a couple of examples of photo mashups, just to give you an idea of what they actually are. Um, so this was taken from the ABC Open Producers um, project that has now closed. It was called Now and Then, uh, but it's basically just to inspire you and show you what a photo mashup is. So this one was mixing an image from the present with an image from the past, and I, I think it's really lovely. It's like kind of looking through a window into the past of these guys hanging out, looking out to the sea. I love these ones as well. These are by Warren Hanley. He'll be running a workshop um, in May, but I'll have the dates later on for you. Uh, he's just mashed up a few different images. I love this one, the cricketers with the balls. They're cricket heads. <laughs> um, 
And here's another one. <laughs> the Monster Mutton Chop Brothers Attack Innisvale. <laughs> so that's just an example of some fun that you can have. Um, and he, yeah, he'll be running that workshop so you can go along and make your own, of course. The next category is called Application Slash Data Mashup. This is kind of the area that I'll be showing most of my examples in today because it's the area that I've kind of had my interest in in the past. So this is all about creating your own application or an interactive kind of work or a data mashup. And you have to use at least one of the release data sets from the state library or from any of the libraries nationally or in New Zealand, of course. Um, as well, you can mash that up with any other freely available data sets as well. So the prizes are pretty much the same as well for that category. And then the final category is the digital media mashup. So this could be a short film, a sound recording, a soundscape, and it's allowed to be up to 90 seconds, so quite short. Um, and you can use the rights-free digital content from the library data set, so that includes the photos. There's scores and things at which you can translate into MIDI files and use them to mix up music. Um, and also the other information about convicts and so other things and maps. And we'll go through them um, later on as well. So that's those categories. All right, so now I'm going to jump in and just show you a lot of fun examples. This one I really like. It's an example of visualising a narrative. So this is the Lord of the Rings. All of these lines, well, we've got um, the horizontal axis is your time and the lines are our characters. So you can see where different characters are apart in the narrative and where they come together, where more of the action kind of happens. And I just like that as a different way of being able to look over a story, particularly one that you might know really well like Lord of the Rings. Um, it's a nice way just to get an overview. So that's one example. Here's another one that's visualising a narrative, and this is actually the Bible. So this is down the bottom there is... Um, each of the different chapters in the Bible and then where there's cross-referencing cross occurring in the Bible, that's what's causing these arcs. And so depending on how far apart the cross-references are, you get a different coloured arc. So that, the artists that create that thought, created this thought about that to make that visual aesthetic. So you know, that's why we've got the, the greens and the yellows kind of up the top because he thought about how those relationships and the colours would actually look. Um, and I think it, it's a very beautiful thing just to look at. And the artist talks about that and says that was the purpose, just to make something beautiful and to spark some thought. You don't necessarily have to understand what the cross-references cross are. It's just a beautiful image. This is another one that's kind of similar as well. So this is um, visualising poetry instead. And I'm not sure of the poem, I apologise. Um, but this one uh, was an artist that coded each word in the poem and added up, so each letter had a value and added up the value of each word and then plotted that on these arcs and there's a red dot for each word. And then I think the grey lines show where the words occur in the poem, so what phrase, so when, when it's a phrase how they're linked to one another. So, yeah, another fascinating way of mapping language that you might not have thought about before. This one, again, is another one of visualising words. And I'm a real big fan of um, visualisations that actually have a, a physical element to it because that's something that's often not thought of. Often people think it has to be digital um, in order to be a fancy schmancy visualisation. But really, sometimes it's a matter of picking up a pen and a paper and scissors and making something, which I really love. Uh, you probably have seen a lot of these kinds of things. So visualisations that visualise a network of some kind. So you often see them for social networks if you all have your friend wheel on Facebook and you can see who you're related to and how all your friends are related to your other friends and things like that. So there's, in the last few years, there's been a real burst of those kinds of visualisations and they can be really beautiful and they can be beautiful just to look at, similar to the Bible one we were just looking at. Um, sometimes they can be frustrating to sort through and it's like, what is this actually telling me? So that's why it's important to think like the artist that did the Bible visualisation and think, OK, what impact is this image actually going to have? How is someone going to read this image? Um, so one of the examples of that kind of a network um, 
visualisation that I really like is this one, which is the grand taxa taxonomy of rat names. Um, and this person, the way they've categorised the rat names is pretty cool. So we've got wordplay over on the side there. Physical or metaphysical at attributes, um, like Little Kim and all those kinds of things. Um, coolness. Letters, so if people are using letters in their thing. So you, this, you can just have fun going through and reading it. <laughs> Sorry, it's not very easy to read, but all of these ones that I'm showing today, I have the links to them all, so you can go through and view them on the web and investigate them a little further if they take your fancy. I really love this one. I'm a fan of this one. So this is visualising space travel. So this is, um, or, or space exploration. So how many times... We've had spaceships or um, go and circumnavigate each of these planets. Um, I, I just think it's a very beautiful image. Uh, and for someone to have thought of that and the way it's of presenting it, I thought was awesome. Yeah, I'm not... Do you think we actually have spent, sent spaceships to all of those places? Yeah. See, I was astounded. I didn't realise we had done all of this. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is another one that's um, visualising travel but of a very, very different nature. So this one is visualising travel that has occurred in narrative um, and the different colours indicate what type of travel. So the blue that you can see, it's a bit hard on this screen, but the blues that you can see indicate alien technology travel in movies. Um, the green is a force of nature type travel. Uh, the red is a time machine travel. Um, white is a deep freeze of some description and then pink is unknown. We don't know how they travelled. <laughs> but I think that's just a, a really nice, fascinating way of looking at travel in movies. Uh, and it's something... That's what I love about visualisations. They're often revealing something that you've never even thought of. And it can be quirky 